There Hi, you go. Stuart here. I'm with uh, Liz Trotter. Hey, Liz. Howdy. And it is Friday afternoon, 5 o'clock <sighs> Eastern time. Hallelujah. Fridays are feeling feeling pretty good right now, aren't they? There was a time, it was like, you know, it was just another Groundhog Day moment, but I'm looking forward to tomorrow. You know, yeah, you, know you know what I'm doing tomorrow? Are you fishing? No. I mean, I don't know. I might tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow morning, I'm getting up and driving to Aiken, South Carolina, which is probably three hours from, from where I am. And picking up Molly. Oh, oh, picking up the new puppy. So exciting. Oh, well, that's pretty exciting. Yeah. I'm kind of I'm kind of embarrassed because I, I, I am excited and I should be <laughs> beyond this by now. But you know, it's been a while since we've had a dog and then just being, you know, kind of locked up and the whole thing that we've been it's nothing else to do, so you might as well get a dog, right? Ah, super exciting. I'm so glad that you're able to do that. I thought that uh, that name sounded familiar, but I just figured it was another one of those geography places. Oh, but you must have mentioned where where Molly was going to be. Yeah, she's uh, down the road a few hours, so we're going to all load up in the family truckster and go bring the dog home tomorrow. Yay, that's super exciting. Ah, I'm happy for you guys. You can get her start getting her trained on how to how to run with you, Tom. It will. Uh, well, she's got legs that are about that, so it's going to take a while. <laughs> um, and we're going to make sure that we're going to. Can I tell? Can I tell my Lucy story? Yes, but don't make me too sad over here. I'm like, no, distract. no, no. I'm talking about when we picked up Lucy. Oh we yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Lucy. That's the yeah, absolutely. Story. Um, I'm rolling this back. This is probably 15, 16 years ago. Um, my oldest daughter wanted a dog and, uh, we, we got a dog and it was, a, it was a Labradoodle and we drove to, uh, Augusta, Georgia, actually to pick this one up, which isn't too far from Aiken, by the way, just coincidental. And when we showed up, it was kind of hectic. And the lady who ran the place just kind of, you know, grabbed us, brought us in, handed us the dog and kind of ushered us out the door. And when we were leaving, there was a, a guy and his son that came in and, you know, I said hi. And he said that he flew in from like Kansas City and he flew into Charlotte and drove down to Augusta, which has to be like two plus hour drive, I guess, to pick this dog up, to then go back to Charlotte, get on the plane and fly home. So my Daughter and I drive all the way back home, stop a half a dozen times, let the dog go to the bathroom. We stop at PetSmart, you know, to kind of get the dog collar and the, all of that stuff. And it's like, hey, look, this is our new dog, Lucy. And people were kind of looking at us a little bit funny. I mean, I don't know. So we get home and we're all in the backyard playing with Lucy. And I pick Lucy up and discover that Lucy wasn't Lucy because Lucy was a boy. And... My wife didn't believe it. She wanted me to go back to PetSmart and ask them to make sure that uh, that was okay. <laughs> I, don't need, I don't need that type of humiliation. I already, you know, I, I know that much. And my oldest daughter was probably nine and Kate was probably four and Richard was born, but I mean, he was just an infant. He didn't even know what day of the week it was. The girls bust out crying. And this was the day where, you know, people didn't even like, did she didn't have her cell phone number. So Janice goes in and checks uh, voicemail and the person who was running the uh, kennel was trying to call our, our landline, leaving messages that we had the wrong dog. She was upset, but she gave it to us. She's the professional, right? So anyway, we got a dog, did a dog swap like halfway between Augusta and, 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 and Charleston and actually got Lucy. So we were all happy. I think she had to swing another deal with the guy that flew in from Kansas yeah. City. But the dog that we took was supposed to be going back to Kansas City that day. So I'm not sure how that turned out. But I'm going to be paying close attention when we pick Molly up tomorrow. That she's at least a, a female this time? Yeah. That sounds good. Times are different, though, because they're doing the whole thing on Facebook now. We did like a doggy draft. We picked her out on Facebook, and they're kind of watching Molly every day on Facebook. So I don't think there'll be any confusion. 
I hope so. I hope for your sake, because it sounds like a great time to get a new puppy to me, especially during quarantine. I, I see that you've got some of the regulars here. Hey, Dan and Leslie, and we've got a, a, a special guest that, that I haven't seen in a while. Wow. Hello, Allison. Allison Palmer is, is, is with us today. Allison Palmer was one of the, 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 the key people that, that kept the wheels on, on Arxy for, 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 for a few years. And she was president for, for at least two years. I know that, that, that she was president, maybe longer. And, has you know one of a handful of people that has done a tremendous amount for the residential cleaning industry. So I'm, I'm kind of I'm really excited that you're here with us today, Alice. And it's uh, good to, to 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 see you, even though we're kind of doing it through this whole Facebook thing. So Alice and I have Allison and I have something in common. We have the same nickname, uh, somewhat. Uh, Allison's nickname is Buff, and my nickname was Buffy. Uh, and, and this is both when we were younger, in our younger days. So, hey, Buff, and really good to see you. I haven't seen you in forever around here. So, uh, super exciting. Uh, she kind of like dropped off the uh, uh, residential cleaning map when she retired. <laughs> Can't blame me there, though, Allison. So, what's going on in your world, Liz? Ah, my world is, you know what, I actually have been ill, and I had a fever, and so I was like kind of in the whole, uh -oh. thing. but yeah, I'm feeling a little bit better today, and I don't have a fever today, <laughs> so like if, if the fever comes back, you guys will get to see what a COVID test looks like. Positive or negative, we'll be we'll be checking that out. So do you think, they, do you think that you could actually arrange it where it could be administered on our Facebook Live? <laughs> I'm guessing not. You have to. I have to drive in there. <laughs> so <laughs> I got these ATP swabs. They kind of look, maybe we could simulate. I, I don't think so. So let's everybody keep your fingers crossed that Liz doesn't have COVID nineteen. I'm feeling much better today though, so I'm yeah. thinking I'm probably okay. That's what I'm just yeah. about this. I mean, as a rule, like over 90% of the people who go get a test wind up coming back negative. But, you know, people get sick for a lot of different reasons. But anytime anybody has anything wrong with them, the first thing you think is that's it. It's true. Yeah, even Tim, my my own husband, as soon as he found out I was sick, <laughs> took a couple of steps back and says, do you have it? <laughs> I was like, um, do I look like I have a test on me? Uh, I'm gonna guess no. Uh, yeah. It, so that that's been kind of top of mind, trying to make sure I'm I'm healthy over here. Uh, but other than that, I I think we are you know trudging along. Work is good. That is one really really good thing. I I know I mentioned that we're having really good luck with hiring, and I've heard that other people are not. I'm not exactly sure why. We might even want to dig into that a little bit, Tom, why some people are having better luck hiring than others. We're having really good luck right now. Um, we sent out all of our letters. We had four letters come back saying, nope, we won't be coming back, uh, at least not now. I'm still scared, got kid problems, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, but hiring to cover for them has been good. Our customers are coming back in droves. I'm sure anybody that was uh, where they government was shut down and they're starting to open back up, you're probably dealing with the same thing. So the scheduling is a little bit uh, crazy. Everybody wants cleaning as soon as possible and a lot of contact by phone, by email, lots of messages when we come in in the morning. So I'm guessing you guys are dealing with the same thing there too. Um, give you a little bit of insight into what, how we're managing that a little bit. Um, so, because one thing that was happening is, okay, everybody wants to be on the schedule. We got everybody on the schedule. But then we would, um, on the day of the cleaning, we were getting this thing where people were like, oh, maybe you better skip me one more day. You know, kids are still, whatever, all of the different reasons. So we were losing like 20% of our schedule uh, on the day of, which is not, well, you guys know that's not good. You, you can't really ask for anything much worse than that, except for 30%, right? So um, what we started doing to uh, alleviate that is calling everybody, 
We called everybody in that week, and now we're staying on top of it a week out. We're actually physically picking up the phone and saying, just a reminder, we're coming out, or we'll be here on whatever day, you know, Tuesday the 27th. And looks like we're going to have a morning arrival. If you have any problems, make sure to let us know because we've got you booked in this slot and we don't want to give it to anybody else. Lots of people want your spot. And that has really helped a lot. Telling people that if they give up their spot, somebody else is taking it mm -hmm. has really helped. We're now, we're not having those calls. And I don't know exactly what the number is because I'm not watching them. Um, somebody else is, but uh my understanding is that we're not getting any of those calls right now. I'm sure we're still getting a couple, but we are hiring people. We've hired five people in the last maybe 10 days, week to 10 days. Yep. So yeah, we are. And that, that the thing that is great is we hired all of these people well, we, how we do our hiring is a little bit different. We hire for a two-day temporary position. And then if we like those people and they like us, then we hire them permanently. So we've hired, I think, seven people, but we've actually kept on five of them. But I don't know about the rest of y'all. If you, if you get seven people and you love five of them, that's some good numbers right there. So we have just been really happy with the people that we're getting. You need to buy a lot. Right? I, 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 you know what, Tom? I might just do that. I might just buy a lottery ticket. That has been what it's felt like. So, okay, this is the caliber of people that we hired. One of the women that we hired sent me a Facebook messenger. Hi, Liz. I hope I'm not stepping out of, of turn. I'm one of your new employees, and I really wanted to introduce myself. My name is her name and this is a little bit of my history I'm very excited to be working for your company how many of you have gotten those right that was that was new for me I was like loving her and I'm such a cynic sometimes my first thought was I hope her background check comes up okay maybe she's trying to get around something like that but no she she was great. She was former military. Now she's cleaning houses and I'm loving her. So yeah, it is great, isn't it? Uh, oh, and Rosemary, did you see what Rosemary wrote? I don't know if you can see this, Tom. Hi guys, I watched the first two modules of PHC and it was really very good. Awesome. Yay. Yay, glad to hear that, Rosemary. You've been around for a long time. So say same as us. And so I really value your opinion. Thank you for that. That, that actually, quite happy. Uh, oh, Rosemary's having the same luck I am too. We graduated three new techs yesterday. Hiring is good. Quite a few of our clients are skipping day of two. People here are still afraid. Try my strategy, Rosemary. Sounds like it worked really, really well. I know, Denise, right? So awesome. Yeah, I, I love her. Uh, thanks for sharing. I'll start mine this weekend. Yep. So that, that's my big uh, share about what we're doing. What are you guys doing, Tom? Um, over in Charleston, you got anything fresh or Atlanta? We're, we're making it up, and actually, demand is is outstripping supply at the moment. So we're trying to get everybody back to work, and it's a little bit of cat herding at the moment. Um, we've got some people who are telling us they don't want to come back to work, so we send them the letter, and we're just kind of writing them off. We're in the process of recruiting more people. But here in Charleston and Greenville, we actually have clients stacked up who want to go back on the schedule, which is is an awesome thing. Atlanta was a slower start because they were still kind of, kind of, I guess, hot. Um, but but we're, you know, we're probably a third of the way back to where we were when things were completely shut down, and we've got enough help to handle all that at the moment. So. You know, it's looking good over the next couple of weeks. So, so we're we're you know keeping our fingers crossed that, okay. that everything works well there too. What then, <laughs> Sounded like you stopped mid sentence. <laughs> no, I was just wondering. Any questions? Uh no, nope, nothing here. Rosemary's saying the same thing as me. She's going to try my strategy. Uh, Things are just so different for people right now. And a lot of people are getting on the Zoom meetings and all of these different meetings that 
you know, there was a, a long stretch of time where people did not like to get a phone call. You know, a phone call was like too intrusive. You know, why are you calling me? They'd rather get a text or an email, almost anything. Um, but now they're they're liking the phone calls. They're you really really, oh. Yeah. <laughs> a chance to talk and yeah. Um, so yeah, you guys uh, it looks like Heather and Carrie uh, didn't get to hear my strategy. It is nothing great, nothing to have to go back and listen for you guys. Just this um, call. We called everybody a week out, and now every day we do the next, you know, so like Monday through Friday, called all on Monday. And then on Tuesday, we called next Monday, and on Wednesday, called next Tuesday. So we're keeping up on it just one day. And we're telling them that we've got them on the schedule on this day. It's saved especially for them. If they don't want it, let us know because we have a huge list of people that would love to take their spot. And so knowing that somebody wants to take their spot is what's keeping them on the schedule. They're like, eh, I don't want to give up my spot. And, and the truth is, there are a ton of people that would love to take their spot. Any, so, any okay. what your answer rate is? Uh, I don't, Tom. I bet we have that though somewhere. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of one of the, the grinds to be normal, especially when everything's normal. Most yeah. of the time you find yourself leaving a message and playing yeah. that game. I'm wondering if it's any, if you're finding it to be any different now that things are different. Well, we are getting more people on the phone. Oops, sorry about that. We are getting more people on the phone, but I don't know that percentage off the top of my head for sure. Um, I know that we're getting people on the phone. That was one of the, when I started telling everybody to call, they're like, but we never get anybody anyway. You know, we just end up leaving a message. I'm like, I don't care. Don't leave a message. <laughs> no, I'm, I don't care. I leave the message and sound really excited and enthusiastic and make sure you're smiling. Um, but they, they're getting people on the phone. So. Calling, nice, keeps personalization, also good sales strategy. Yeah, I mean, isn't it funny that we're talking about calling our customers as a new strategy? <laughs> I feel like that's really funny. It's like, oh, you mean you're actually going to talk to the customers? Huh, wow. But yeah, that's actually working right now, is calling them. So, Tom, I think you said you had something cool to share today. I think it's cool. So, you know, you know how that goes, right? <laughs> Actually, I thought it sounded good too. So, oh, Heather, yeah, red zone. Yeah, sorry, Heather. Keep at it. Can do I need to blow up a little bit? Quite a bit more, Tom. Okay. All I can see is that there's a green line, and I am wearing. I I had to check and see if I'm wearing my glasses. Okay, well, how about if I just go full screen? Bam. All right, much better. How about that? If you, go, if you can go a little bit bigger, it would even be better. Okay, hold on. Oh yeah, that's so much better, Tom. Okay, well, I'm not gonna read this word for word, but I wanted to share this blog post. This guy is a biologist at uh, Dartmouth. He's an epidemi epidemiologist. Um, and he's a really good writer too, a blogger, and he spends a fair amount of time uh, looking at all of the, the the research that's coming out and all the data and as it pertains to COVID-19. His whole blog is about, about COVID-19. And um, every once in a while he comes out with a, with, a, with a really good piece. I mean, everything he does is good, but it, sometimes he does something that's really awesome. And I love this piece. And he brings in several other uh, uh, studies that we've referenced in, in, in past weeks. And that's one of the things that I particularly like about it. And the whole point of, of this article is try to give us some perspective as to what we believe it takes for, for somebody to contract COVID-19 and what are the things that pose the most risks to us and what are some of the things that maybe we think are really risky that, that aren't. And I just shared the link to it, but I'll, I'm going to go through here. One of the things he's pointing out is we need to be a little bit careful about opening up the economy right now because if you take New York City out of new cases of COVID and look at what's happening in the rest of the country, the cases are still rising overall. 
Now, part of the reason we're trying is that we're doing a better job of, of testing than we used to. So, you know, we're, we're, we're catching more cases as well. But this is kind of a, a precarious time for us as we start opening things back up that we need to be really careful and hope that people don't uh, wind up getting sick again. He talks about how we shed the virus which is an RNA enveloped rat virus, SARS-CoV-2. He talks about it right here. And he says, our best estimates as what it takes for us to actually contract um, COVID-19 is we need at least 1,000 of those uh, shedded you know, RNA viruses in our body in order to make us sick. Anything less than that wouldn't be a mental dose to, to, to make us sick. And he gives a couple of, of studies here to back that up. We're not going to go into that in a moment. But if you think about needing a thousand infected droplets to make you sick, what it, that really gets down to is, you know, if you had a hundred particles inhaled with each breath over 10 breaths, that could make you sick or 10 particles inhaled over 100 breaths. Theoretically, that can make you sick. But anything less than 1,000, chances are that's not enough to make you sick. Talks about you know, that, that, makes such, that makes such good sense to me, Tom. It seems so logical that uh, it, it's hard for me to understand the people that are just vehemently arguing this and I, I know that it's you know 90% science and 10% other still at this point, but it just seems so logical. Yeah, it, it, it is. And once you kind of get your mind wrapped around the, I guess the biology and the physics, because it's really you got you know all of that <laughs> working together, it's easier to rationalize and, and, and make decisions. And that's that's why I'm sharing this, because I think once you once you, you you read something like this and really think about the mechanics of it, you can make you know smart business moves and smart you know safety moves in terms of where the risk really is. And he talks about bathrooms, and there's been some some studies, and I've, I've shared some of these earlier, and this is talking specifically about these are they they find they have found RNA in in, in, in in feces, but they haven't been able to verify that it is it is actually active or infectious. Being that having the RA there and having it viable viable, so it can make you sick or two different things. But public restrooms, both on surfaces as well as the air, is something that that you need to be careful about. And I've shared a study that was done in China in a hospital that basically was treating COVID-19 patients. And one of the areas in the hallways, open areas, no one was getting infected because they, they got really good methods of testing and, and, and tracing how, how people are getting sick. But people who are in the confined communal bathrooms, high incidences of, of illness. So they're saying public restrooms are an area where you want to be taking uh, special caution both in terms of high touch areas as well as just just the air, something to think about. The physics of, of expelling these droplets, he talks about a single cough releases about 3,000 droplets at 50 miles per hour. Now, not all 3,000 of those droplets necessarily will be carrying the shedded RNA. So that's something else we'll get to in a minute, but that doesn't mean all of those droplets will make you sick, but some of them will. And 50 miles an hour is pretty good, but check out a sneeze relative to a cough. A sneeze has 3,000 droplets traveling at up to 200 miles an hour. And most of those droplets are small and travel like great distances across the room. So if you remember from our COVID-19 training and the safety precautions and everything that we talked about, one of them is, you know, make sure that we're covering our face if we're sneezing. And now hopefully we're wearing a mask if we are in some type of a public place. But coughs and especially sneezes are, are, are really uh, bad news. If a person is infected, the droplets in a single cough or sneeze may contain as many as, check this out, 
200 million virus particles, which can be dispersed into the environment around them. 200 million. And remember, how many does it take to, to, to infect somebody? A thousand, right? Yeah, crazy. So that's that's kind of kind of bad bad news. But a breath, on the on the other hand, could be anywhere from fifty droplets to five thousand droplets. That's a pretty pretty big swing, but it's low velocity and most of it gets to the ground quickly. So just breathing, especially if you're breathing through your nose, is is, is pretty um, is a lower risk thing, especially if it's a short amount of time talks about how sneezing and coughing release huge amount of viral material, but the droplets released from breathing have low contents of the virus. A sneeze, because it's a violent thing and it comes from like deep in your lung, that's where that 200 million comes from. But they're thinking, they've got studies that show that a person infected with flu will release up to 33 particles per minute. And the flu, while it's different than COVID nineteen, they're both SARS type viruses, and they're they're I mean they're 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 related. So it's it's not unreasonable to believe that they've got similar characteristics. He does some math here, assuming that they're releasing twenty just to, to help us do some simple math here. For the formula. Uh, successful infection equals exposure to the virus times time. Remember, if it's like, if I'm getting 100 particles per minute over 10 minutes or 10 particles per minute over 100 minutes, it's kind of the same thing. I'm still getting my thousand. So how much are you getting it, getting of it and, and over what amount of time is it? Hey, Tom, can I interrupt here real quick? Absolutely. All right. So I just wanted to speak to everybody that is on the, on the Facebook Live with us right now. If this is making you really nervous, really um, giving you anxiety, keep watching and keep this in mind. The reason why we're sharing this information is for the same reason that we share all of the rest of the education that we share with you guys. It's because the more you know, the more prepared you can be and the more in control you can be. Having this information can help you determine where you really should be able to go. What is really safe? What's safe for your people? What's safe for you? So take a deep breath and relax. And let's continue on for anybody that's feeling a little bit stressy about this. It's not meant to um, be inflammatory. It's helped to, it's being shared to help calm you down and give you a little piece of peace of mind. This might make you feel a little bit better. If you accept that this general breathing releases 20 viral particles per minute into the environment, that means if you need a thousand to get sick, you need to be breathing that for 50 minutes. And that's assuming that every one of those viral particles are leaving one person's body and coming into your body. And it's not going to work that way, right? Because they're going to be dispersed all over the place. So just get to the punchline here. A lot of cases we get really anxious about like going to the grocery store. And we got to be mindful and we certainly, you know, need to be thinking about touching high touch areas. But if we just walk by somebody in, 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 in an aisle, even if they are, uh, you know, have, have the virus and even if they are shedding, unless they're like sneezing on you, if they're just breathing, you basically have to be in their face for 50 minutes in order to, 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 to get enough of the active virus to make you sick. Just passing in the aisle is a pretty benign thing is kind of where this study's going. So that should make you feel, feel good. It makes me feel good. Me too. Because before reading this, I was a bit anxious about, you know, when I go to a store, it's like, gee, you know, I don't want to get, you know, around anybody. And that's why social distancing is important because if you're six feet away from people, you know, it's almost, even if, the, even if they're active and even if they're shedding, if they're just breathing 20 particles per minute, most of them are gonna be hitting the ground. You're not gonna be getting in them anyway. And even if you did like get closer, if it's just pass, you're, you're just getting a, a small, small amount. Now, if they get in your face and sneeze on you, you might have a problem, but- A really close environment, Lots of communication, lots of talking back and forth. 
you can see why that would be a problem as well. But that distance, it's, it makes it clear why that distance really matters. You mentioned speaking. Speaking drives the droplet uh, rate up about 10 times. You're shedding about 200 virus particles per minute during speaking. Um, and again, this is assuming every virus is inhaled. It would take like five minutes to, to you know, get enough of the virus to, to, to make one sick. And getting every virus inhaled from somebody else really physically isn't going to happen either. But like worst case, you'd still need five minutes of face to face of somebody like talking to your face to make you sick. So that's how that whole formula of exposure to the virus times time works. Talks about asymptomatic people and, you know, various age groups react differently in terms of how they shed, but you know, everybody who does get the virus and it doesn't matter your age, you're, we're, we all will be shedding it. Typically we shed more before we become symptomatic. Um, talks about where most of the viral outbreaks have happened. Obviously, you know, nursing homes was, you know, kind of a, kind of a bad deal and the whole, you know, cruise ships, um, you know, are, are concerned, but in terms of where most people have gotten sick, that's a small part of, you know, the entire global issue. Some of the bigger spreads are like meatpacking plants, weddings, funerals, birthdays, business networking events. Um, here's a study that we shared a couple of weeks ago. This is on the CDC website and it's talking about how, uh, I guess I could open this graphic up. Yeah, I thought this was an awesome study. There's an air conditioner over here on the side of the screen that was blowing across these tables. This person right here was, was actively shedding. All of these red dots here got sick, tested positive at these various dates. This was on the 24th, but on the 29th, uh, the second. 27th. Notice these people over here at these tables. None of these people got sick. There were other rooms over here, or tables on the other side you can't see in this graphic. Those people weren't sick either. All these people were in the airflow with the air conditioner. And there's a return over here. So the air was just circling over them. But they were there for like an hour and a half. Okay. That's the other part of this confined space, breathing air for an hour and a half with that dude shedding the whole time. If they were there for, you know, five minutes, the, the likelihood that many people would have gotten sick would have been, been a whole lot less. The hour and a half part, remember it's the viral load times time. Here's another study. This was a call center in somewhere in Asia. I think maybe it was Korea. Um, can't swear to that. I know it was an Asian call center. Uh, one person over here had the virus and all these people got sick. This is on the other side of the office and a couple of people got sick, but not nearly as much. And again, these people were all breathing the same air for, for, for eight hours a day. Um, they introduce a term here. Basically they're saying, most of the people got sick by breathing it in the air and a small percentage got sick by what they call this fancy word here, which is like a medical term for uh, touching high tech areas. And I looked it up. This is how it's pronounced. Pomatis. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Pomatis, Tom. Pomatis. It's not part of my working vocabulary. I had to look it up. But one of the things that we try to do in smart business moves is put us in a situation where we can be, you know, speak to, to these matters in an informative, authoritative way. And if we incorporate that into our uh, working vocabulary, especially when we're speaking to the public and speaking to our clients, that might uh, be a step in that direction. But basically these are 
you know, catching a, a, some type of illness by touching a high touch area, like door handles, water coolers, elevator buttons, so on and so forth. But most of the people in this study got sick by breathing the droplets that were in the air because again, it's the amount of, inf amount of uh, virus in the air times time. And they were just like locked in the same room together, breathing on top of each other all day long. I've read several studies, and this speaks to it, that singing sheds a lot more virus. Just the whole activity of the lung capacity and what you're doing and like people, people in choirs who are all like jammed in together, all singing together or, or like in church in tight pews singing. There have been a number of studies where they've had bad outbreaks with that. People on top of each other singing, studies where Singing instructors have gotten sick, teachers, growth coaches, all the same thing. You're spreading a lot more virus when, when you're singing. And again, you guys, this isn't to be scary or inflammatory. Just mm, look at the information, figure out how it makes sense in your world. How can you take better charge of your situation, your, the people around you, and how can you stay in control? Right? Good information here. I, I see, you know, I read this as a lot more positive than, than, than negative because on the flip side of it, the chances of catching this, if you're in an outdoor environment, are almost non-existent unless you get right up in somebody's face and they sneeze on you. The idea of just walking down the sidewalk and passing somebody, this is benign stuff here. You're, you're, you're at relatively no risk according to all the different studies that were aggregated in this paper. Um, the idea of going to a store and doing your shopping, you know, as long as you're using you know, good precautionary measures and making sure that, you know, you're not touching high touch areas and then you know, rubbing your face. I mean, you've got to be careful, but just the idea of walking by somebody in a store and getting sick seems like that's a relatively low probability. And it seems like everybody that's gotten sick, that's almost not measurable. Most of the people that are, have gotten sick are, you know, in these areas where they're, they're, they're tightly together, they're engaged in certain activities that are, that are subsets or small parts of how most of us spend most of our working hours. That's, what I see that's encouraging by this. I had shared a couple weeks back, Tom, that I was cutting hair outside. I cut my mother-in-law's hair. She's 92, I think, maybe 93. I cut my son's, I cut my husband's, and I cut everybody's hair outside. And I had a lot of people reach out to me and ask me, you know, why? That just seemed really unsafe, especially for my mother-in-law. And I, I didn't have these numbers to be able to, uh, to explain why. But again, it just seems so obvious to me that if it's shared through droplets, that it's going to be really hard to get enough concentration of the viral load outside, especially a little bit of breeze, nice sunny day. I was like, I, I felt really safe. Uh, and, and so I'm really loving having this information someplace that is giving us real data that we can look at. Oh, it feels so good to me. Yeah, Dawn's got a statement here about negative airflow systems do not require masks. I don't know about that, but I know a lot of restoration work, we, you, you know, negative airflow basically takes whatever's in the room and keeps it from going out in the building. Basically, it's, 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 if you think about being in a room with the door shut, negative airflow means the air is coming into the room as opposed to going out from underneath the door out into the rest of the house. So negative airflow is, is, is a good thing. And I know like in a lot of uh, hospital settings where they're doing testing, they have uh, negative airflow systems. So when they're doing the, uh, the test and doing the swab, a lot of times people cough and choke when that happens because it sucks having something jammed all the way, you know, up in your cranium like that, that they want to make sure that that those droplets are not going out into the rest of the building. But parties, funerals, 
you know, we're, I'm not going to go through, you got, you, I think you guys got the, got the gist of this. I've posted it in uh, the chat here a couple of times. I'll do it one more, one more time. But um, this guy is pretty good blogging. Isn't that a woman, Tom? I, I've never met a man named Aaron spelled that way. Uh, uh, I guess nowadays it doesn't really matter. We probably shouldn't even refer to gender. Yeah, this individual. Honestly. Doesn't matter, Tom. I Doesn't matter at all. Right. That's a good question, though, I guess. Let's look him up. I'm thinking let's look her up. I'm thinking of Erin Lash, who also oh. spells her name that way from Artsy. Looks like a guy to me there. Yeah. It does, it does. But again, Politically incorrect to be pulling this up at all, probably. Forgive me. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. That was on me. Uh, so Tom's got this hooked up to our coronavirus resources. And uh, is it going to, do they go in order, Tom? Like, will it show up on the bottom? The newest, yeah, the newest stuff is at the bottom. Why is that right. the case? I don't know. It's just easier to add it that's how it works um, i get yeah. it because we want you to walk by all the other documents first and see what else you might be missing before you get to I'll, that one i'll put a link to to aaron's uh blog blog here um what else? i know that we had there were we had a couple of uh people reach out and say that uh chad's PPP tracking tool wasn't working. Do you know if that's working now, Tom? The tool or the instructional video? Was it the video that wasn't yeah. working? And I, I presume it is. I talked to Chad about it, and he said that the platform that it was being hosted on was uh, being was under maintenance. But I'll click on it here. Here you go. It's working now. Okay, great. So uh, anybody that wanted to use the uh, uh, PPP tracking tool that Chad showed us, which is amazing, by the way, if you need a little bit of direction on how to do that, maybe you weren't on, maybe you forgot, it looks like it's working again. Yay, happy about that. Oh, and look, here's Chad. And if you have any questions, here's his phone number. <laughs> no, don't do that. Oh, <laughs> no. Okay. Don't call Chad. He is a really busy guy. <laughs> you don't want to call him. Yeah, his phone guy. number, Joe. <laughs> Look, his phone number's right there. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, Chad. Tom did it. Wasn't me. He wouldn't put his it, phone number it, there if he didn't want us to call. <laughs> Gosh, Tom. Call him right now? <laughs> yeah, call him. Ask him if it's okay if everybody else calls him. Well, yeah, he'll love that. We're getting tired. Hey, we'll, we'll call him Monday. We'll, we'll be surprised. <laughs> okay. That sounds good. Uh, Dawn's laughing. <laughs> Dawn knows Chad and Diana, I'm sure. Uh, those are the Henleys, Chad and Diana Henley from uh, Natural Care in Texas. Houston? Are they in Houston, Tom? They are in Houston. Yeah, they are uh, They are a great team. Actually, that they have a whole big family Everybody in the in their family works for their company. They also have pest control, and yeah, they're they're a, a dynamite family. Hey, Candace, I don't know that she's on here, but if she is. I want to say hi because she's awesome as well. Um, if you're here, Candace, tell Chad we're going to be calling on Monday. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Chad. So calm, not me. <laughs> Because Chad um, is so busy, you guys, that yeah, I'm sure he would love to take calls. He would take a call from us. Come on. Oh, he would. That's the thing. He would take everybody's calls. <laughs> he would. He's a great guy. Uh, but we don't want to do that to him. <laughs> He's busy. <sighs> All right. Anybody have any? Oh, I, I want to know. Anybody get any monies? Anybody get any PPP money or any idle monies? 
over the last day since yesterday. What did we have yesterday? Three people had idle mm -hmm. money, right? We did. It was, uh, yeah. it was raining money yesterday. It was. It was a good day. Every time you guys get money, I feel like I'm getting more money. I like it. It's fun. Uh, did anybody on here read their, when they got their idle money, did anybody on here read their contract? What, what came through? <laughs> Tom and I both realized that we didn't. Woohoo! Dawn, yesterday. Woohoo! Denise, you got your idle money. Yay! All right. Congrats. All right. I'm happy for everybody. Oh, yeah. Tom and I were talking before the call today that <laughs> neither one of us actually read our stuff. We had our financial people reading it. And so we didn't even know what, what was in there. Deborah, you signed your idol contract today. Woohoo! <laughs> what was on it? Yeah, tell us what was in it. I heard from uh, one of the guys in my MMA group uh, what was in it. He had he had signed his contract today. And he was like, Hey Liz, did you did you read this part? And I was like, Yeah, I don't think I read any of it. I don't remember anything like that. And so he had to give us uh, a little bit of a, a rundown on what was going on there. Uh, I don't at the moment. It's only for agricultural loans. Yeah, if you haven't signed out. Oh, sorry, Martha. I know we talked with Martha yesterday. Told her to apply. Sorry, but um, I hope you. Uh, I oh, okay. Did they not accept your loan at, or the application at all, Martha? Is that what happened, or did they just tell you they weren't going to um, be approving it right now? Hopefully, they still accepted it in case they get funded again. Um, and Debbie says she's gonna, she did read hers, but she's gonna go read it again. Yeah, smart move because none of this stuff is that easy to read, right? Yep, Denise too, she's gonna read hers a few times. Uh, that's smart move. I, I read the, well, I didn't read the entire CARES Act. I, I should have, I think Matt did. Mr. Rhymes with Crickets, I think, yes, read, uh, right, didn't he? You know. But I, um, the vast majority of the documentation that came around about the CARES Act, and I was like on that over and over and over again too. There's if you default. One of the things she remembers is that your business is theirs if you default on the loan. Well, you know that's a really good thing to remember right there, Debbie. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to remember something, yeah, that's good. Application at the moment, so not even doing uh, privations. Oh, applications, not even doing applications at the moment. Who? For, okay, for well, people, are they still taking PP or are, are banks still taking PPP applications? I haven't heard anything about that. Does anybody know? Anybody recently applied for a PPP? Or, um, yeah, anybody have any information about PPPs? That would be helpful too. If we hear anything, Martha, we'll make sure and let you know. I know Debbie also from yesterday was in the same boat. And then didn't get didn't, didn't get in time. Liz, personal property is also at risk. Okay, good to know. Uh, Denise was sharing that. Did you see that, Tom? Yeah. Good. Looks like they're still taking loans for the PPPs. That's great. But for the, for the idle, you're paying it off over thirty years. That's um. <laughs> Very nice. And yeah. 3.75 also. Yeah, no worries, Martha. I actually have a, a little note down here to, to keep you in mind if, if it pops up again. Um, oh, Dawn says um, that the idol sent you a message today for next step to portal, but you're not sure you have your cogs correct. correct. Well, you know, don't don't be nervous about your COGS question there, Dawn. I have heard so many different things around how people reported their COGS, and it doesn't seem to have made a whole heck of a lot of difference to the um, to the SBA. <laughs> They're like, oh, you, you calculated it that way. Oh, okay. Oh, you calculated calculated it this other way. Oh, okay. So. Oh, Debbie, you're already almost through your PPP. How long have you had it? Are you working on eight weeks or did you just do a really good job of managing it? Well, she's almost spent all of it. 
um, almost her entire PPP on payroll. Great. Um, mm -hmm. Seventy five percent amount. That's great. Were you able to keep all your people employed or at least meet your numbers too, Debbie? I'm assuming. Yeah. And clean a bunch of homes with all that, I hope. Yeah. Well, she said she's had it since April 13th. Okay. okay. Well, Really good for you. Oh, what's that, about four or five weeks? Five weeks. Yeah, yeah. five weeks. You yeah, had three more weeks to go. Okay. Awesome. Well, wow. You 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 did well then. Hopefully that means you had people to clean. Yes, she has all of her um, employees too. Awesome. That's great. Love to hear that. Can't wait to hear some people saying that they got their information back from their bank that all of their monies were approved. That's going to be my first big hurrah. I'm waiting for that. Uh, okay. Hey, Tom, it's 2.52. We've got a few minutes here. Maybe you could share our links, cleaning business today, or you want to do a uh, modern cleaning first? Yeah. We had a um, new program, a new class launched because, yesterday. Friday the, before. COVID, the COVID class is still, uh, Getting a lot of lot of lot of traction on that. If if anybody is out cleaning homes, you know, in, in a COVID nineteen world, you know, it's just three hours worth of information focused just specifically on how to be safe, the right PPE, uh, how to sanitize, disinfect, what you're supposed to do with with, with high touch surfaces, um, you know, a, a lot of a lot of the finer points that that explain the why behind you're doing what it is you're doing with the idea that if you understand why you're doing something, you have a deeper appreciation for the benefit of it. And there's a greater likelihood that you will do it with a deeper level of commitment, do it more consistently. And that's kind of the premise of, of a lot of the training, if not all of the training that we do, that just telling somebody to do something is inadequate. You got to really help them understand the why behind it. If you want a level of commitment where you're going to get the outcomes that you're shooting for. So, you know, so it's a three hour class in total. There's, there's two, uh, two parts. The first is more about the science and we get into, you know, the science of what we need to know about uh, COVID-19. And then we get into what we call about practical application, what to do with all of that science and how to keep ourselves safe and how to uh, get the best outcomes for, for our clients. And if you want to, sign up for that. You got two options. One, you can click on this button and enroll as a single individual and take it right now. Or you can do a bulk purchase if you want to sign up everybody in your company by clicking here and there's bulk discounts depending upon how many people you sign up and uh, you give us your your uh, information about your, your, your cleaning professionals. We upload it into the platform and they all get, you know, emails and, and you can do it as a group. Um, hey, Tom, this, will this class also be on the new platform? Yes, it will. Do you want to talk okay. about the new platform a little bit? Because it's really going to be awesome. I would love it. But I want to say one thing real quick. If you enjoyed the blog post that Tom shared today, you're going to love these classes because it's you're one of those people that really likes to be informed, that likes to have knowledge. You're going to love this class. But yes, please go ahead, Tom. I'm super excited about the platform. No, that's a, that's a good point. I didn't even put two and two together, but I guess the reason this class is what it is is because we enjoy stuff like that blog post that we just shared early. And again, it gets back into just, having instructions isn't really adequate to, 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 to get the consistent best outcomes you're looking for. You got to understand the why behind it. That's why blog posts like we, we looked at earlier are really so important. If you don't understand the science behind it and the why's behind it, you're not going to make the best decisions. You're not going to do it consistently. The new platform, the new platform, um, we're going to have that rolling out. We're actually testing it now, but we want to make sure that we have everything right before we, we, we go live with it. Um, it gives cleaning business owners the opportunity to set up their own account and have control over training their own people. Where if you want to go ahead and buy 50 seats for whatever programs you want to train on, you can do that. And then when it's convenient, you can sign up and sign up your, your, your cleaning professional, take whatever classes you want them to take. 
you can monitor their progress, see who completes, see who, you know, gets the knowledge that's right and gets the, you know, takes the final exam, who has their certificates of, you know, the completion at the end. And um, you can enroll people over a period of time. So if you buy a bunch of seats with the idea that I'm going to be training my people over, you know, the next six months, for instance, you'll have the ability to sign up people in the future that you haven't even hired yet. So it's going to be it's going to be a lot more convenient and a lot more useful to cleaning business owners than doing it. And even, and even more than that, Tom. So the way it was structured before, it was going to be you bringing on your people and sending them through our training program. Now you're going to find that it's more like bringing your people and giving them your training. So yes, your training will be delivered by us, but it'll feel like, it'll feel to them and it'll feel more to you like you are providing your training, your company's training. And that is kind of a game changer. Now that elevates your credibility in your own employees' eyes. You look like you are more educated as well. Well, I mean, obviously you will be because you will have also taken the course, but it, it's a it's a slight distinction that makes all the difference. A lot of times it's just that pink baking powder, isn't it? Yep. That's a story for another day, though. Um, this is the PHC class program. Excuse me. It consists of seven classes. Um, it's about an eight-hour program in total for all of the classes. Each class ends with a knowledge check, which is a quiz, just to make sure that. You know, you kind of got the, the seminal points, the important stuff that you're supposed to, to, to get from each class. Um, just like the HCT, excuse me, just like the um, COVID-19 class, this is designed for cleaning professionals. Doesn't mean that it's not useful to a cleaning business owner, but it's written for the benefit of people cleaning homes every day. That's why we're putting it on the learning platform. That's why we're you know, we want to make it accessible. We want to make it affordable. And the idea is it's our hope that everybody who's cleaning homes professionally gets this level of understanding, understanding the why behind what they're doing. Um, at the end of the seven classes, there's an exam and you get a certificate at the end of that if you successfully complete that. And it's non-prescriptive. You want to explain a little bit what we mean by that, Liz? Yeah, uh, I, I really love this about this program, too. Uh, what we mean by non-prescriptive is we're not going to tell your people the right way to do things, the wrong way to do things. This is the wrong vacuum. This is the right brush. This is the wrong this, the right that. That's not what the program's about. It talks about the all of the, actually looking here, you'll be able to see all of the things that have to do with making up a professional house cleaner and what, what, what it's going to take. And like what is professional house cleaning? Not, not what do we think professional house cleaning is, but what is the role of the professional house cleaner? Uh, what do we all agree on? What does everybody agree on? Uh, so it's really hard to explain without getting in there and just digging around a little bit, uh, but it's not going to be about the specifics that anybody's going to come back to you and argue with or say, hey, they said on this program that we're supposed to be using this other kind of vacuum because it's, you know, whatever, ergonomically correct or whatever. You're not going to find any of that in this program. I, I, I want to point out that we're rolling these seven classes out over the month of May. By the end of May, all seven classes will be out. Currently, uh, class one and two is live, and people can, can take them now. If you sign up for the program, you'll have access to all seven classes when they're all out by, by the end of the month. But example, you know, in health, we, we, we talk about, you know, all the different path pathogens that you come into when you're cleaning home for fashion. So it goes beyond, the, uh, you know, COVID-19 and talks about, you know, how a raw piece of chicken on the countertop can introduce a bacteria and how you as a, as a cleaning professional should be handling that to keep yourself safe and to make that surface safe for the, for the clients that you're serving. And, you know, 
that's not that's not debatable. You know, we talk about in in, in once we get to chemistry and physics, we talk about what the pH scale is and how using a basic cleaner is good to remove uh, acid-based soil. And that's not debatable. That's science. That's stuff that we all agree on. In safety, we talk about good practices to reduce the chance of slip and falls and back injuries and repetitive motion and explain the science and, and, and the why behind all of that and what you need to do to keep it in place. There's nobody that can, it's, you know, everything that we're doing transcends anybody's cleaning procedure. Think of it this way, I've described it this way before. This is like a driver's ed manual. And, you know, we all have the, our own cars, right? It has the owner's manual that talks about what type of gas to put in it and how much air to put in the tires and all that is company specific. But the driver's ed manual transcends all of that. This is the driver's ed manual for the residential cleaning industry. It doesn't matter what type of business you have, this stuff applies to all of us. I really like what Leslie has written here, Tom. She says that she would say that whatever practices and systems that you have in place, they won't be contradicted by this training. And, and she's already taken at least the first class, yeah. I know she said before. So, yay, thank you. I think that's a nice, simple way of thank saying you. it. That is awesome. Yeah, taken, it is. We've taken, I don't say great pains, but I guess it's all relative. At times, I guess <laughs> it certainly has been that, um, you know, while we're, we're putting this program together for cleaning professionals, in the back of our mind, we also realize that it's for the benefit of cleaning business owners, that we want to make sure that this suits the needs of what cleaning business owners want their cleaning professional to know and do. We always take way longer than we think we're going to take. We only have 30, 20 seconds longer on this, believe it or not, Tom. <laughs> cleaning business today, this is our COVID-19 coronavirus downloads page. Rather, I'll paste this here. I'll take doing that. Please read Rosemary's statement. She is so right. Um, this will be a self-esteem builder for your technicians. You want to have some longevity. You want to have some more engagement training. Number one thing you can do training. We got to go. It matters. Thanks guys. We'll see you Monday at five Eastern. Have a good weekend. Get rest, some rest, 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 rest. I'll have a dog for you. We'll, you get to see the puppy on Monday. How about that? Oh, so exciting. Bye, guys. Bye,